Thanks for visiting my channel. The topic today is a uh, duty enjoy demand type one. There is a full presentation here on hereditary enjoy demand types one, two, and three. In that also, I have delved into the acquired enjoy demand and also idiopathic enjoy demand. If you haven't listened to that because it's already published, please kindly follow this very link. You can copy and paste. Type 1 is close to 80% of all hereditary and geoedema cases. The issue here is C1 stress in vitro deficiency, and the inheritance is AD, that is autosomal dominant. In that case, you need only one of the parents to provide the gene, and then you come down with the disease. You don't need both of the parents to provide, you know, one gene making a pair. No, just one to lead to the disease. Here, there is no Aussie carrier. So consider if there is angioedema without Aussie carrier, consider bradycardine induced angioedema. Then the first thing first, stop certain medications like Ramipri or Catopri, which means AC inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, or non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, stop them, okay, including DPP4 inhibitors. Check for the level of C4. And then if the level of C4 is normal, repeat the testing when there is an acute attack of angioedema without osicaria. So, C4 level is to be determined again, and then we'll go ahead to determine the level of C1 estrous inhibitor. In addition to that, we want to know about C1 estrous inhibitor function. Is it malfunctioning? Is it dysfunctional? Then we can check for C1Q level also. Okay. What are the possible results that we're going to get? C4 will be low or reduced. C1 inhibitor level will be low or reduced. While C1 inhibitor function is reduced or there is no dysfunction. While C1Q level will be normal. There will be no clinical suspicion of acquired angioedema. If we have clinical suspicion, then don't label this patient as type 1 hereditary angioedema yet. We rule out the, the acquired angioedema. But in acquired angioedema, no positive family history here. There will be positive family history. And in acquired angioedema, the patient will be presenting later in life here. The affected individual is presenting early in life. This might be a child or you know, an adolescent, early in life. So if we have all the results you know, on the previous slide and no acroangioedema is suspected, positive family history presenting early in life, maybe it's a child or adolescent, then you can confidently diagnose Hereditary angioedema type 1. Further details on diagnosis of angioedema is available here on my channel from the link earlier provided. Triggers. What would trigger you know, this angioedema without urticaria in type 1? Pregnancy, certain foods, cold exposure, viral illnesses, particularly in children, emotional stress tongue piercing, trauma, surgery, dental procedures. Finally, here is the question. Do we need to know more about what? About hereditary angioedema and angioedema generally acquired, idiopathic, and so on? Yes, we need to know more. We need to know more about pathogenesis of type 1 and other types of hereditary angioedema, but acquired and idiopathic. 
we need to know more about how to make the diagnosis fully beyond you know the presentation here right now we need to know more about signs and symptoms the differential diagnosis the treatment treatment in acute phase now the first drug of choice we need to know prophylaxis short term the medications that should be taken we need to know and for long term prophylaxis we need to know the medications that should be taken right and if you want to know all those just click on this very link and that will take you to my channel again where i have one hour presentation on angioedema without urticaria meaning bradycanin induced angioedema thanks for listening remember to subscribe to my channel remember to share this presentation remember to click on this link so that we can know more about angioedema in general. I appreciate it.